Well, uh, first and foremost, in Pay Farmers, we are focused on the health and safety of our team and our customers. So uh, most of our effort at the moment is really focused on how do we keep modifying our operating environment to manage the health risks, uh, which we think we're, we're doing well, but there's still more to do. And also, how do we maintain the supply of essential products and services that are critical to many of our customers, uh, particularly in the business, government, emergency services area? Uh, the, yeah, clearly, the shutdown in New Zealand, uh, although, it, although it's not a, a major part of the West Farmers Group, it's about 8% by revenue, it is a very big impact for our thousands of team members there and their customers. So we're trying to do what we can to support them to adapt our businesses to comply with the government's, uh, the government's requirements there uh, and just acknowledging that this is a very fluid situation uh, that is changing day by day. Absolutely. Uh, we were just looking at your stock price uh, rallying in the order of some 5% today on the back of, uh, I guess, the statement that you released earlier where you said that you would uh, pay your previously declared fully franked uh, dividend, this one of 75 cents that you announced at results uh, due on March 31st. Is that a good idea? Should you not be holding on to that cash given that this is such uh, a fluid situation and we don't actually know how long these lockdowns will be in place for? Well, um, West Farm is, is fortunate that coming into this uh, this crisis, we, we have a very strong balance sheet. Uh, we always try and retain a conservative balance sheet, but uh, a, a month or so ago, we also uh, uh, raised an, an additional billion dollars of cash uh, by a partial sell-down of our coal stake. So we we do have the benefit of the strong balance sheet. We, we have the, well and truly have the capacity to honour the payment of the interim dividend. And it's worth remembering that a lot of our 480-odd thousand shareholders, many of which are retail shareholders, they rely on our dividend uh, as a core part of their income. So we're very, very pleased to be able to continue to honour that dividend. But uh, obviously, we are uh, very focused on uh, weathering the storm ahead. And our strong balance sheet, the strong businesses we have, uh, our team's working really hard to adapt to the changing environment uh, are some of the things that we're focused on in the months ahead. Now, Rob, it's Will here in Sydney. I just wanted to touch upon the fact that in New Zealand, you've had to close those Kmart stores, but you're able to keep the Bunnings stores open. Now, in terms of Australia, the definitions of what is going to be classified as an essential retailer are going to be critical. Have you had any kind of discussions with uh, federal or state governments in terms of ensuring that you are going to be able to keep, say, perhaps Bunnings and even the office work stores open? Uh, yes, we have. And look, I thought the Prime Minister of Australia was quite quite clear last night where he signalled the intent for retail stores to continue uh, to remain in operation. Um, the, the focus of government is to try and minimise the risks uh, and a lot of the closures have really focused on areas where there is a, a static uh, gathering of people um, and where you have a number of people sticking around in close proximity via cafes, restaurants, uh, cinemas and, and so on. Uh, and retail, uh, particularly if managed in the right way, doesn't necessarily hit that criteria. It's interesting that around the world, different countries are approaching uh, the shutdown, lockdown situation in a variety of ways. Look, I, I think that there are many things that we can do in Australia to reduce the risk of further lockdowns. And that really comes back to all of us at a personal level taking a greater degree of responsibility, personal responsibility, to, uh, to follow the government's guidelines around, uh, around self-isolation when it's appropriate, uh, materially reducing the risks. And that's certainly what we're doing in our businesses in order to continue to sustain operations.